Hey guys, Anthony Mann, president of A Social Strategy. Today, I wanted to bring you a little bit of a different article as we're well into what most agents refer to as the selling season. So a question I hear all the time is, is there really a selling season in real estate? Now, most agents consider the selling season from the beginning of spring till the end of summer. But what we've noticed over the years is that many times during the selling season, as summer starts to roll around, agent's business starts to go down slightly. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but what that does mean is that you don't necessarily have a business that you're able to scale on a real basis. What I mean by that is there's a lot of people today who talk about having a team and how they leverage their team in order to continue to do business 365 days a year. As we know, going into summer, people want to spend more time with their family, more time with their friends, their children, whatever it might be. And for so many different reasons, Reasons, they take time away from their business. And unfortunately, as you take time away from your business in the spring and summer, it starts to affect your business as we roll into fall. So today's video is a little bit about teams and how having a team can change your business in a very meaningful way. So how do you develop a team? Well, teams are really changing the game in quite a few ways. The biggest way teams have been changing the game over the past few years is that it allows people to actually take time away from their business and go ahead and actually continue to scale their business while they're not working in it. So what I mean by a team is not just a couple of people, a couple guys, a couple girls, or a mix of them together that have been working together as real estate agents, but I mean actually developing a business of real estate. Most teams are comprised of a couple different things, but most importantly, there's three people on every team that are pretty much the most important people on their team. The first one's gonna be a transaction coordinator. That transaction coordinator is gonna do things like set up appraisals, handle paperwork, answer phone calls when they come in from vendors, and set up appointments and meetings for the other people on the team. The next person that's obviously a very important person to the team is usually what we call the team leader or the rainmaker. The rainmaker is that person that actually brings in a majority of the business. They're the people at the networking events, going to conferences, and talking to people everywhere that they go in order to bring additional business to their team. The third person that we see on most teams is what we what is known as a buyer's agent. This buyer's agent will handle almost every single phone call that comes in from new leads on the internet, maybe Facebook ads, maybe Twitter ads, maybe Snapchat ads, YouTube ads, whatever it might be. But these are generally going to be people who are looking for homes. Now, most teams are comp comprised of, at minimum, these three core components. However, as team con teams continue to grow, you'll start to bring on more buyer's agents, more transaction coordinators, and even in some cases, additional listing agents. So what is the very first thing you need to do before starting a team? First and foremost, the very first thing that you need to understand before even considering starting a team is you need to have more business coming in than you can personally handle. What I mean by that is you need to make sure that there's more business that's going on in your life that if you actually stop working in your business today, unfortunately, some people's phone calls, emails, text messages, people are going to fall through the cracks. Once that starts to happen in your business, it's time to really seriously consider starting a team. Well, that's it for today's video. Again, I'm Anthony Mann, president of A Social Strategy, and I hope you enjoy the article.